What's up guys? So, let's get something out of the way here. I see that you guys really enjoy the hardware reviews that I've been doing on the channel. So, me being the guy that I am, gotta give the people what they want. So, I'm gonna continue doing all these hardware reviews because I actually do enjoy doing them and the fact that I see you guys enjoying them a lot, you know, that makes me wanna create more of them. So, we'll keep doing those. I'm still gonna create the other kind of videos that I like to do as far as the, uh, the more cinematic videos and like the adventure videos because I really love doing those. Uh, I'm not going to pretty much ever stop creating what I want to create, but I am going to still do keep doing these hardware videos because I really do enjoy doing them for you guys. So, with that out of the way, today we do have a new keyboard and mouse in the house. Actually, it's not new. It's uh, new for you guys because I haven't reviewed it on the channel yet, but uh, I've been using it for a little while. I actually purchased these two items to work with my um, build that I have over at my office, and I ended up kind of phasing these two things out and not really using them anymore and I'll get to that when we do the review. So let's go ahead and roll the intro and we'll get right into it. Let's go! Alright, so the two items that I have to show you guys today are these two right here. The Red Dragon Mirage Gaming Mouse and the Kumara Mechanical Gaming Keyboard. So. When I purchased these two items, like I said, I originally purchased them to use them at my desk, uh, at my office, and I honestly didn't want to spend too much money on my peripherals when I was building my office computer because I already had some really nice peripherals anyway that I used for my gaming build, so I figured if these two didn't really work out, I would just use those at my office instead. And that's honestly, in the end, what I ended up doing because of the one or two shortcomings that these two, or this mouse and keyboard combo actually has. Now, the reason I'm actually going to review this for you guys on the channel here is because they're actually a great budget option for people looking to get something for their uh, gaming PC or office PC, whatever, um, but there just may be a couple nitpicky things that you guys may find uh, the same way I do that may turn you guys off from getting them, but if you guys can overcome those shortcomings, then, I mean, these could be a great option for you because the price is actually really good on both these items. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what you can expect from these two items, what they are like in actual use, and then some specs on these two items. And then you guys can pretty much draw your own conclusion whether these are worth it or not. So check out the specs here and see what you guys think. So starting with the Red Dragon Mirage Wireless Gaming Mouse, we can see that although this is a pretty cheap and an inexpensive mouse, it does have a pretty good list of features including up to 4800 DPI, 8 programmable buttons all over the mouse, it actually claims that it has a 15 meter range, and it actually comes with its own disc that has its drivers on it which mostly nobody will use, and it actually comes with replaceable feet for the bottom of your mouse. Uh, just in case anything does wear out at any time using the mouse. This mouse does have kind of a cool little feature that was hidden when I first saw it, but those three little lights on the side there, they actually indicate how much battery life the mouse has left, which was pretty cool to find out. Another win for this mouse is definitely the uh, ergonomics of it. The way it feels in your hand is a lot better than the Logitech G203 I just reviewed on the channel. It's a little bit bigger and it actually does have a nice little rest for your thumb on the side as well as those three buttons on the side that are very well used for FPS of shooter games especially that front little click button right there where you can actually make that either your fire button or maybe even throwing a grenade or something like that which is pretty awesome. Then looking on the top of the mouse you can see the scroll wheel at the very top there which is actually textured feels very good on your finger when you're trying to scroll fast. It actually is considered one of the buttons because it does click. And then right below that, you can see the DPI up and down buttons, the bigger one being the up button, the smaller one being the down, and it can go through six different DPI levels, up to 4800 DPI as I said. And then right below that, you can actually see the little line in the middle of the mouse that is part of the red LED that does turn on, and then you can see the red dragon logo right below that, which actually is able to be turned on and off. And then taking a look at the front of the mouse, we can actually see and get a better feel for the ergonomics of it. 
if you'll look at the right side of the mouse you can see where that thumb rest is that I was talking about and then you'll also notice that your pointer and your ring finger will be in different sizes on the mouse because it does kind of contour to your hand as well as the spot where your ring finger will go right there where those lights are it actually is contoured so it gives a better grip which I like a lot better than the last mouse that I reviewed that was more of an ambidextrous size and then it does also have those light indicators right there that indicate how much battery the mouse still has. Then if we flip the mouse on the side, we can see where the sensor is, the battery door, the USB storage spot, the on-off power buttons, and then the rubber feet that I showed you that are replaceable. These rubber feet are actually pretty good for a mouse of this price. They haven't really caught up on anything on my mouse mat, and they don't slide too much or anything like that. They're just about right, and it's pretty surprising for a mouse of this price to get something like that. And then looking at this right here, you can see where the little setting buttons are for the on-off and eco settings on the mouse. The only difference between on and eco is when it's on eco, the LEDs on the mouse will just automatically shut off to save battery for you. Alright, and rounding out all the features on the mouse, we can see here in their software, you can change all sorts of different features including your language, which obviously here we're going to change it to English. And then all of the different settings of the mouse right there, scroll rate, everything you can change and tweak it. There's actually a enhanced pointer setting, which I don't know if that affects anything or not, to be totally honest. You can change any one of the buttons to do really anything you'd like it to, up to about 19 different combinations it's said. So yeah, you can actually change any one of those buttons, set your own different profiles here. And then you can also tweak the mouse's DPI from uh, 800 DPI all the way up to 4800. And where I run into some cons with this mouse is with the mouse's pulling rate and the actual frequency it runs at. It's supposed to be running at 2.4 gigahertz, which is supposed to be nice and fast and give you a great connection between your computer and your actual mouse and your clicks. But where I find the cons is in the actual connection itself. So if you're running the mouse and it has anything next to it in any of the USBs on your computer, you're going to run into problems with connection issues. I'm not sure why that is, but if you put it somewhere close to the actual mouse itself, you're going to have a lot better experience. Alright, and moving on to the keyboard, we have the Red Dragon Kumara or K552 mechanical keyboard. And as you can see, we have the red LED backlit keyboard right here. And this also does come in a couple other versions, including a non backlit, a RGB LED, and also rainbow LED variant. If you use the included key puller, you can actually take the keys off and reveal the blue switch underneath it. And unfortunately at this price range, you're not going to get genuine Cherry MX switches. These are Otemu clones, and they are very, very clicky, which brings me to my one con of this keyboard, and I will show you right now. So I think you guys get the idea of what I'm talking about here. It's a very, very loud clicky keyboard, so if that's something you're looking for and you don't have any coworkers to annoy or anything like that or a girlfriend to annoy, which in my case, I definitely do. So if it's in a situation like that, you're going to be just fine with this keyboard. It's a very solid keyboard, but if you're around other people who are not used to mechanical keyboards clicking around all the time, you may want to look for a different keyboard. So in addition to getting a very well priced mechanical LED keyboard, you also get a couple other features that improve the quality of life over the course of using this keyboard. Like a caps lock on and off LED and an actual scroll lock LED light. This keyboard features all of your F keys as multimedia keys as well, so listening to your music and watching your movies is a breeze. It features a very sturdy ABS plastic shell around the keys, which actually makes the keyboard a bit heavier than I thought, and it also has those flip up and down feet on the bottom. And with the press of the function key and the scroll lock key, you can turn the LEDs completely off or back on. And if you press that same function key and the home key, which also has a letter B on it, it does a really special breathing effect. So you can see why they labeled it with a B. So this keyboard definitely gets a win in my book. If it wasn't for how loud it was, I would honestly still be using this keyboard right now. So not too shabby, right? So for the price that I paid for these two items, uh, $35 for the keyboard and only 10 bucks for the mouse because I actually ended up doing one of the Amazon refurb deals on that one. Uh, I got it really cheap. So for $45, it wasn't a bad buy to be totally honest. I still actually ended up using this keyboard on my gaming build even though I, ne I didn't use it at work because of how loud the keys were. And then this mouse, I actually ended up using it on my gaming build as well. So um, if not for that, I probably would still be using this mouse anyway because it still does a great job. Uh, despite that 
little laggy and then connection issue that it does have occasionally, like I said. So um, if you guys can overcome those shortcomings, like the, the loudness of the keyboard and then uh, the, the occasional wireless issue, if it's not in the exact spot that it should be with the mouse, then these could be a great option for you guys as well, especially if you guys are first starting out and you guys need a great budget option to put on your desk with your new gaming build. So if you guys enjoyed this little review that I just did, go ahead and make sure you drop me a like down below. Make sure you guys leave me some comments. Uh, tell me what you think about these two items. Um, if you guys own these items especially, let me know how your guys' experience has been. Uh, I love to hear from you guys as always. And then if you guys have not already, please subscribe to my channel so I can keep making these cool videos for you guys and I will keep pumping them out as much as I can. So until the next one guys, I'll see you later. Peace.